Hey, I'm Chase with Kremen. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to remove the knockout rod from your L32 and replace it with a through tube for running long parts that you can't collect conventionally. Let's get started. Alright, first step, like any setup, take all the old shit out. We're going to take out the subspindle collet, sleeve, wipe it down, wash it out. And that's why, because it's nasty in there. If you don't wipe down your stuff after every job, your coworker's gonna talk to you about you and your dog's gonna run away. All right. We'll leave all this out for now. And then we're gonna move to the back of the machine, pull out the knockout rut assembly and support tube. First step, get your adjustable nut fucker, take off the high pressure line. We'll just zip tie it out of the way. All right. That's out of the way, four millimeter Allen wrench. We're gonna loosen this screw that's holding the knockout rod in. Knockout rod's loose. Then we're gonna pull it out. Except we can't because the knockout pin's too big because I didn't take it out when I was doing the front. So it's not the end of the world, it just adds extra steps. We're gonna tighten this back up. Get the nut ah. back out. Take the high pressure elbow off. Loosen up the knockout rod again. And then, then slide it forward. So if somebody installed it with a <laughs> hammer. So now I have to uninstall it with a hammer. Piece of cake. So we'll just take this arm and prop it out of the way for now. And we'll take a five millimeter T handle and loosen these four cap screws on the center piece, not the outer ones, the inner ones. We'll take these all the way out. If you lose them, they're just 20 millimeter M6 by one cap screws, nothing fancy. Please don't put quarter 20s in. All right, those are out. This should come right out, and it did. If it doesn't, there are two threaded holes in here. You can run a longer M6 by one screw in there and press this out. There's two of them, one on either side. Just work them in there and press this out. So we got the knockout rod and our support tube out. We're gonna put these back together so you don't lose them. We'll put that coolant elbow back in there, and we'll just put this out of the way. So here we have our through tube assembly. This is two components. We have a bushing here that's a duplicate of the bushing on our knockout rod support tube. And this just bolts into the back of the subspindle, just like that support tube did. And then we have the actual knockout tube that our parts are gonna be feeding through. And this tube cannot be more than twice the diameter of the small part of your part. So the small diameter of your part running through this tube has to be more than half the diameter of this tube. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is they're gonna run up over each other and jam up in your tube and probably start a fire. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So, we just turn this tube up out of aluminum. We just turn this bushing up out of aluminum. When you're doing that, make extras. Because you might not always be running the same size through tube and you wanna have extra bushings on hand, ready to go. We can drill these out, these are blanks. We can drill these out for whatever size tube we need. Half inch, three quarter, inch and a quarter, whatever size tube, we've got extras on hand, ready to go. And we're gonna take this and install it. We got two grub screws on this. Those need to be loose so we can set how far out the tube sticks into the subspindle, because you want it running up into your pickoff collet, but not too far. So I'll go ahead and put this in. And it drops in just the same. We'll take our screws and put them back in. Actually, I'm gonna take it back out and rotate it a little bit. Rotate it 90 degrees to make it easier to get to those grub screws. 
Now we can get to him to snug the tube down. All right, those are in, just snug. Don't use the hand of God on them. You don't need to. And we'll just make sure this is slid back and then we're gonna go back to the front and put in our pickoff collet. We've got our pickoff collet that we're gonna use. We've got our collet sleeve that we wiped out when we took the subspindle apart. And this is what makes it work. This is a support bushing that goes in, we don't need that that goes in the back of pickoff collet. And this is gonna support the front of the tube. If you don't have this in here, that front of the tube, once it gets some parts in it, it's gonna to wanna to sag. And when it drops down, your parts will probably miss the tube entirely and they'll end up packed in your spindle bore, or they'll just hit the end of the tube and crumple it and ruin your through tube. Grab the spring off the floor, drop it in there. So we'll put it in there. This is turned up about 10 thousandths over the OD of our tube you do not want a slip fit. You want a loose fit because this is gonna be turning and that tube is gonna be static. So it's gonna rub a little bit, it's fine. This is just some sort of plastic, doesn't matter. Delrin, nylon, peak, PTFE, doesn't matter. You just don't want it to be tight. It'll self clearance a little bit, but you don't wanna melt it or start a fire. We're gonna put this in there just like normal. It just slips in, slides freely. We're gonna put this assembly back into our spindle bore, just like we would on a normal setup. Get her lined up, give her a little persuasion to get her started. There we go. Line up your dowel pins. Give your spindle nut one more wipe for good measure. Make sure your contact surfaces are clean. And we'll go ahead and put this all back together. Two taps for luck. These L32s, I have had multiple occasions where these nuts back off while it's running just from the starting and stopping. They just work themselves loose. So I just give them a couple of taps to make sure they're set tight. So now our tube is just in there. We don't know where the end of it is. It's not inside the collet. So what we're gonna do is grab the tube from the back, slide it forward until we feel it go inside the collet, slide it up to the back of the collet pads and then back it off a little bit. Because we want it as close to the back of the pads as we can get it, so there's no way for the parts to escape around the tube. They have to go in the tube, but we don't want it to be touching the back of the collet pads because then it's gonna rub, and we don't want that. So I just grab the, grab the tube, slide it forward until I feel it stop, stick my finger in there, and I can feel it. I can feel the tube turn it a little bit like yep that's the tube and you can make a sharpie mark if you need to i just back it off whatever eighth inch quarter inch something reasonable you just don't want to back it off too far and you don't want to touch in the back of the collet pads grab a wrench we'll just just a scooch and then we're going to tighten down those two grub screws just with our fingers we're not going to crank on it because that's going to deform the tube wall and now your tube ID is not the same, it's, it's deformed and your parts may not go through. So we're just gonna gently snug it down just until it's being held so it won't slip, but we're not cranking it down. And literally just two fingers, just a, just a little bit. So that wraps up the installation process. That's the physical side of our through tube installation completed. There is a programming component to this. You have to make some changes. You can't just run the same programs. That's a topic for a future video. If you like this, if you found this helpful, like, share, subscribe, follow us for more. Tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell your grandma, tell her I say hi, and we'll see you in the next video.